Jason, our financial administrator, Ram Bhan Sebastian, and our library teacher, Shaini Ram. Can we give a big clap? Nothing 
and stats. A library has a huge resource of knowledge and dear students, you all are aware about books in our library. It has a huge collection of books like literary, fiction, non-fiction, encyclopedia, history, science, story books, magazines and other informational map materials. A school library is the first place where a student gets an opportunity to experience a vast collection of books full of knowledge. Due to their curiosity to know what each book talks about, they slowly start the habit of reading. Library is a very useful platform that brings together people willing to learn. We develop our reading habits from a library and satisfy our thirst and curiosity for knowledge. We become co-creators of stories. As we animate the stories, we read in our minds. It is definitely a healthy exercise to the mind. I conclude my speech by quoting the beautiful words of Margaret Fuller, Today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Students, read again and again, shine like a star in your lifespan. Thank you and have a happy National Reading Day. Thank you, Chaitima, for that wonderful importance of the day. And as the day is important, so is our guest of the day. So let me introduce our guest. She is Miss Arushi Chen. She has completed her 10th standard from Chanda Public School, Chandrapur. She studied the 12th class from the Center Point School, Nagpur. She has a bachelor's degree in journalism and mass communication from Amiti University on, online from the Noida from Noida. She has a certificate in corporate communications, Narsi Munje Institute of Management Studies, Mumbai. Her many books are published. The non-fiction self-help help book titled 30 Times When Your Conscience Needs You with Motion Press publication in English language in 2021. She has also published a Hindi language translated version of the same book that is 30 times when your conscience needs you in 2021. Her poetries are published in anthologies by writers pocket publication in 2021 and 2022. She has published a four-line poetry in the Teen Inc. International Magazine based in Georgia in 2021. Her article in the editorial of Rotract Club of Narsi Muji College, Mumbai in 2023 is also published. Her articles are published in the Middle Space column of the Hitwa newspaper since January 2021 to the present day. She has deep interest in writing, an author and content writer by profession and a netizen with an aim of spreading goodness and positivity through words. With a strong belief in the power of writing and aspiration to create better society and connect with my readers effectively, she has poured her perspective towards life in the book. 30 times when your conscience needs you recently have also published in the children's story book then Tiny Tales with TC2 for 0 to 12 years old children, basically from a reputed business family from Chandrapur which is always socially active for good cause. Her awards and recognitions are as follows. She has got the seven years consecutive gold medalist. She was a seven years consecutive gold medalist in International English Olympiad from 2012 to 2018. She has received an appreciation letter from the principal of Chanda Public School, Chandrapur, in 2018. She has been awarded an outstanding participant at Jasmine Training Program organized by JCI India in 2018. She was recognized by the Agarwal Samaj for write-ups and spreading positivity in 2018. Her articles are recognized by the Hidwar newspaper. An interview featured on youth recognition quarters was held between 2020 to 2021. Her interview was featured on Radio Mirchi 98.3 FM in 2020. It was featured on India Today Aspire in 2020. Her interview was featured in 92.7 Big FM in 2021. She was selected among the top 21 and 25 authors of India by NKHC in 
UPC in 2021. She was felicitated by the Bharatiya Janata Party Jain Prakshit Chandrapur for contribution towards the field of writing in 2021. She has received the 21st Century Emily Wilkinson Award by Brooklyn Publication for the book 30 times when your conscience needs you in 2022. So her uh, what you call a profile and biographer itself tells how great a writer she is, how great a young artist, a young budding artist a writer she is. So to welcome such a beautiful person amidst us, may I request our father principal, Reverend Father Jason, to welcome Arushi Jain amidst us with the floral bouquet. A very hearty welcome to you, Arushi. I would definitely like to read out her social responsibilities. She was part of the seven day session organized by USM Indore in 2015. She was the secretary of the Interact Club and the Rotary Club Chandrapur between 2016 to 2017. She was an active member of Robin Hood Army NGO Nagpur in 2018. She was a keyboard speaker at Rashtrapati Mahatma Gandhi Mahavidyalaya Chandrapur in 2019. She also participated in the World Ocean Day Drive organized by JCA India in 2021. She was a keyboard speaker at Sarasri Vidyalaya Chandrapur in 2021. She was paid the national flag as an initiative by the Ministry of Culture to mark Azadika Ahmed Mahasam in 2022. So, a very impressive biographer. And I have mentioned her book 30 times when your conscience needs you. Two, three times, four times I mentioned because that is the book which is already published. And we are going to know what is the brief idea, what is the exact uh, summary of that book. So may I invite uh, Suhani Singh and Vedika Turakar one by one to come and one of the students will show us the book and the other one will tell us what is the story book about or what is that book about. 30 times when your conscience needs you, author Arushi Mehra. In the journey of life, every individual encounters various milestones, some bringing happiness and others presenting challenges. 30 times when your conscience needs you is a non-fiction self-help book written with the aim of spreading hope and optimism among readers. This book is a collection of 30 chapters, each presenting a unique way to look at specific situations from a new perspective, offering fresh insights and approaches. As readers progress to the book, they reconnect with their conscience, a long lost friend in need of them. Readers can grab their book from Amazon, Flipkart, and Notion Place online store. Thank you. We have one more book. Let me call Suhani to read out the summary of the book. Tiny Games with Tinsi Dope is a children's book series for ages 0 to 12, filled with fun stories, memorable life lessons, and activities related each day. As the name suggests, the stories are short, making it easy for a child to finish one day in a single sitting. The narrator Tinsi Dope is a treadmill hill creature who loves traveling different places. She hides, observes everything happening around her, and the narrator has an inside incident in the form of tales to her birdies. Young readers can explore her funny attributes, discover many sides of her personality, and then with a lot of surprises as they go to the book. Thank you, can get their copy from Amazon, Flipkart, and Notion Place online soon. Thank you. Thank you, very kind Sumari. And now, we are going to release our own in-house book, what we call the first of its kind, and the name of the book is A Marvelous Adventure. It has a beautiful uh, content, which the stories you have written, and the book is going to be released today. So may I invite Father Principal and Father Sebastian and our guest of the day, Arushi Jain, to come on the stage and release the book, A Marvelous Adventure. So may I request our guest, Arushi Jain, to please Release the book, a marvelous adventure with a beautiful cover page and very inspiring and wonderful stories which you all, among you, some of you have written. Among can you give a clap? Yes. First of all, lovely greetings everybody. It's truly really wonderful to have each and every one of you here. Your presence means a lot as we all have gathered here on this beautiful day of reading sake. It's a day appreciated by millions of your peers around the nation. Well, myself, Pina Raji Rishi. I'm an aspiring student in the field of literacy. I'm delighted to be here in front of all of you today. Now that we have completed the readings and the intro part, let's delve into the main reason why we're here. It goes like this. 
Around six months ago, Venus Club members were requested to write short stories so that the school can publish a book. Most of us contributed to it, and I too wrote a story. Well, the name of my short story is The Beaded Truth of Life. I repeat, The Beaded Truth of Life. So here I am to give you a brief summary of what my short story is really about. So the protagonist of my story is Bruto, a young, naive, beautiful boy, a boy born in a poor family of 13. Well, Bruno's character is portrayed as a stupid, cruel person who wishes and desires to grab all the pleasures of life, all the materialistic pleasures which the world can offer to him. This pleasure is quite like catching wind. For starters, Bruno's childhood was very harsh to him. He had to withstand a lot of diverse conditions and he used to starve in the way when he was a child. So because of that, when he grew older, he had that strong, tremendous desire to earn money. At first, this thought, this desire of earning money was quite a motivation for him and at some cost, it was a salvation too because it helped him to go through his miserable days and start his own company. But soon, money started devouring him to the point that money became the total purpose of Bruto's life. And he was willing to go through fire-like situations to get his hands on cash. And the sweetness of money corrupted his mind and the sanity was losing. Like the old saying goes, excess of anything is poisonous, and the dose makes the poison. In the end, Bruno got a call from his doctor, who informed him that he is suffering from a very bad condition which is deteriorating his health every day. And now Bruto is flabbergasted that he has number of days to live. And he recalls all the days he wasted in only money and all the moments he could have spent with his family, with his siblings, with his wife. And in the past he was able to sleep peacefully to his house content, but now it's a luxury which money can't buy. The success he wished for he thinks that he finally attained has proven him wrong. What he had was a house big like a palace, designer bags, shoes, bad shoes and clothes, battle things, and the first class uh, treatment and food. But what he really wanted but couldn't get was life and quality living. And soon after that, his company went bankrupt. He had no close confidence. He was suffering from a lot of health conditions. And at the end of his life, he said a few really nice words which are very deep when he tries to understand them. Bruto says, in the end, I regret it. I regret it all. I repent. I remorse. I'm ashamed. A life full of expectations was what I expected. But limitation is a no-brainer. Try to find the harvest and harvest. Never knew the knockout force which pushes me deep in the core was so powerful. Today, my life feels like a lie. It feels so absurd and somehow bustling. I feel like a hopeless living corpse. I don't understand why, but so many questions are eating my brain since rotten. Why? Was my life a joke? Was I born to live in darkness? Who am I? Where am I? What am I? Do I deserve it? The end. So, thank you for listening to my words. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, Rina, for instilling that interest in reading the book and the story. We have one more student from class 10, Nasa Rai. So we are invite Nasa to narrate the summary of the story written in the book, The Marvelous Ender. Well, this morning to everyone present here, respected Father Jason, our chief guest, Father Sebastian, our teachers, and my fellow friends. I'm Nasa Rai, belonging to class 10 B. And on the occasion of National Reading Day, I'm going to share my story. Imagine you are in ancient India and born in a royal family. My story is same like this scenario. There is a prince who fought for his father. Imagine how hard it is to be pain like a soldier and live all the fantasies and fascinating things of the world. But my story is not just about imagining it. It also tells about reality. It tells about how many things should follow and focus on their goals. Sometimes love also don't su uh, support us, but our strength will. My story name is Nipples. I hope you will like it when you will read it. Thank you. Thank you, Nasa. And now, may I invite our guest of the day, our 
opportunity to come forward for our message. Respected Father Principal, Respected Father Sebastian, Respected Teachers, and all my dear party leaders and members, a very happy National Day to all of you. I'm author Arushi Jain, and I'm really, really very honored to be here on the occasion of National Day. Leading is something that takes you to a world that you never knew existed. I believe this quote has been very, very heard by most of you. And trust me, when you start leading, you realize that every word in the sentence makes sense. When you start to lead, you realize there are a lot of things that need to be explored, a lot of subjects that need to be understood, and a lot of things that you can look at right when you start expressing your opinions. I'll tell you with my own experience. When I was a kid, um, maybe I was somewhere between six to seven, I had the habit of reading dictionary, which was interrelated with my mother. She used to ask me to read five words a day and then try to form sentences using that. And in fact, during that time, I loved reading characters. Of course, as kids, we all we all have a read of words. So that time, when I read those stories of different different folklores, I realized maybe I could try writing a poem or a story. And that time, I wrote a four-line poem in classroom. I didn't know where the writing would take me, but somewhere the reader in me knew that I have done something that will make me happy. That is the magic of reading books. That's the magic of reading stories. And of course, there is no genre for writing and reading my books to books, or that I will address you as my genius. There's no genre. You can explore every field, every niche. Start small, start with a small story, start with a small, small poem, a quote, a haiku, or any writing piece. It could be even a newspaper article. Start this living habit. Definitely you will experience a change in your lifestyle when you start doing this. And of course, when it comes to writing, from my experience I would say it's the most, most beautiful activity in the world to do. Because when you use your pen to express yourself, you get the power to write and express your opinions in a very firm way. Be it on any subject. I started writing articles when I used to explore non-fiction job. And that is how the 30 times my conscience needs you was written. And after that, I decided to write Tiny Tales with Jinsi Ju, which was a children's storybook for toddlers. But yes, before you start writing, one thing you must know that you should know your readers. Why you should know your readers? Because when you are in the field of writing, your readers are your real bosses. Some readers might not your work, some readers might have some suggestions to make. So listen to them. If you have been very fortunate that you have a respected teacher, sir, respected father, so guide Take their guidance, listen to them. Take your reviews of your parents, of your friends, and start improving yourself. And you know, when you step into the shoes of a leader, you actually get to not just read the work of a writer, but also read their personality. Because they have poured in their thoughts, their mind, their heart, their soul, and in my words, I would say their conscience into their work. And therefore, before stepping into the of writing, make sure you get the right to happen. And I'm really very glad to know that all of you have contributed to the storybook and many stories have been published. I'm eager to read. At such tender age, you have a published book. All thanks to the school and the respected father for the benefits. And I'm really proud of all of you as a senior from your time. I wish you all a very, very happy and successful life. Keep reading, keep writing. I wait to read all the adventures that I put in. Thank you so much. Thank you, for oh, such a wonderful message, such a motivating message. I think it has not only motivated the students, it has motivated all of us as teachers also. Because as she rightly said, when you read a book, you read the mind of the author or the writer who has written. You can understand the personality of the person. Thank you, Arati. Very precise, very uh, to the point and very, very, very informative. Message. Dear students, now it's is ending a little part of the program which we have here. So, in spite of all the busy schedule of the beginning of the session, we have our talented teachers here. So, may I invite Sangeeta Ma'am, Komal Ma'am, Vihadi Goyal Ma'am, Priya Jong Ma'am, and Pradhi Ma'am to come on the stage for a dance which is art for this National Reading Day. So, let us give a clap to the teachers.
it's time to visit for uh, Colin and Principal. So may I invite the Principal, President uh, the JC, to come and thank us again. Dear Arushi J, Father Sebastian, my dear teachers, and my dearest children, happy National Reading Day. I did tell you, why don't you make me back? Happy National Reading Day. Say that loudly. Happy National Reading Day, Father. Good. Dear students, well, up. When I was talking about how to hold and organize this program today, the first thought that came to my mind was, I should get, we should get, the school must get a very apt guest of the day. And then, well, the first thought, thought that came to me was to contact uh, someone who works for the most established newspaper of the day, which I read it to one, Ramayishwar. I just back to King Ramayishwar. I need to have a favor to be done to me by you. Send one type of favor, Father, but I am looking for a person uh, to be the guest of the day today. Said, Father, just give me two minutes. And in two minutes, I got a call back from you. Father, I have your person here, and that's Arushi J. And then I had a talk with Arushi, and in my uh, conversation with her about four, I knew that this person is a person of big heart. The moment I said, Anjali, I want you here at my school to be the guest of the day on the National Reading Day. When did she agree to come? That is probably the quality of a good writers. To be at the service of the society, school is not a private thing. School is a society is a set. And when I needed her service at the school, she would readily agree to come. Now I have in my hands my students two books. And she has a third one too to her credit, a translation of the same. Thirty times when your conscience takes you. I was just going through the titles. Each title has its own power to energize us all positively. Each time. Sometimes I catch myself judging people. I know it's wrong. Judge not. That's the book of God. Judge not. Who am I to judge people around me? I have my own weakness. My own shortcomings. That would mean I am no person, no one to judge others. The first thing that caught my attention of the titles of her 30 chapters of 30 times when your conscience meets you, but even the best book reviewers hesitate to judge books. Why should you? Why should I? Judge them. I got started reading. I got stuck with the 
children to the rich. Even while I was doing my graduation, I still knew I enjoyed. See, uh, for uh, seven, I would go back home. I come from a family of the eight children. Okay, I am the second. And then uh, all my brothers and sisters had come to me. So when I would go home, uh, well, they would all bring me children to the literature, different books. And I would uh, kindly go through the books, read them. And even as a student of uh, graduation, I had that interest in children's literature, but then I had, by that time, got into serious nature books. And uh, when I speak about my reading habit, you would ask me which book has that you most to father. I don't know if I wish you asked about the title, The Rules by Alex Henry. Well, that is the book that has touched me most in my life. I have read the book several times. All the characters are still very much alive in my imagination, in my memory. It has transformed me into a better person. That is a quality of a way. Really transforms me. This book, The Rules by Alex Haley, is the second book. First of course, the, the Bible that I read every day. The second book that has touched me and brought in some type of a lasting transformation in this book, uh, the, the Rules. The book was written by Alex Haley after doing a lot of research work for 12 years. So that's what I say. This is the power of reading. It transforms you. A reader's mind is not ever a lazy mind. It's active mind. A reader gets knowledge, and a reader has entertainment, and a reader becomes he has all the potential. She or he has the potential to become a good writer too. Therefore. How do you really go through the books that are available to you? Not all kinds of books. Books meant for your kids. And you will one day contribute. See, that is the intention. I wish to turn my students into, well, if you have the support of all the teachers here, the school intends to turn your students into good readers. And one day, most of you shall establish yourselves. As good writers, as Irish as that. And that is why we have brought out that book, Collection of Short Stories, A Marvelous Adventure. And I congratulate all those who have contributed to the world. Some of you, well, your stories, some of the stories have to be, uh, but if they have not found a place in the book for a reason. I just wanted to bring down the number of stories in the book. And I knew mean, if uh, teachers would give a little more directions, instructions to the students, they would produce better stories. These are the reasons why some of the stories could not find a place in that book published by the school. But next time, those same writers will have another chance. See, this time it's a skit, that will be fixed. Collection of skits that will be made into a book. I have all of the requests and I wish to write the formal for the book that will come out of the school in a few months' time during this academic session. And maybe next year. Well, I will try to find out the best poets of the school and it will be a collection of poems. Enjoy the day to every children and once again, it's national reading day to you all. We hope to see many of your publications coming up. All the best wishes from all of us. Respected Father Principal, Respected Father Jason, and Respected Father Sebastian, all the respected teachers, and again, my dearest brother leaders and writers, it was really, really a privilege to be here on the occasion of National Reading Day. Now I will be talking as a student from Chandrapur because you all are my juniors, as I said, and I'm really proud of you all. A big thank you to father and the school for promoting such a beautiful habit of reading and writing among students because there is no age for starting up a passion. And when you start at this young age, I think the future is already bright and colorful for all of you. So thank you so much and have a wonderful time in your life. Thank you. I would say someone among you also invited me in the school later on for being a wonderful writer. So with this, we come to an end of the day's program today. 
So once again, a happy National Reading Day to all of you.